Hello and welcome everyone. In this lesson we'll be focusing specifically on cryptocurrency put options. We'll be looking at how they work, their payout structures, how to calculate the profit and loss, and how to calculate their break-even point. Let's have a brief recap of the five basic parameters that make up an option contract. First, the underlying asset. The underlying asset being the price of which is being speculated on, for example Bitcoin. The option type. Whether the option is a call or put, that is whether the option gains intrinsic value if the underlying asset increases or decreases. The expiry date. The date the option will expire and be automatically exercised. The strike price. This is the price at which the option buyer has the right to trade at on the expiry date. And finally, the option price, aka the option premium. This is the price the buyer pays to the seller for the right to trade the asset at the strike price on the expiry date. This video is an introduction to put options. A put option being the right to sell the underlying asset at the strike price on the expiry date. All the options on Deribit are European style, which means they are only exercised at expiry. However, this does not stop traders being able to buy and sell the option before expiry. They are also cash settled, which means when they are exercised, it is only the profits that are paid. For example, if a Bitcoin put option with a strike price of $10,000 expires when the Bitcoin price is $8,000, then $2,000 would be paid from the seller to the buyer. On Deribit, this $2,000 is paid in Bitcoin, so this would be 0 0.25 BTC, that is 2,000 divided by 8,000. Speaking of which, let's go through the profit and loss of a Bitcoin put option. For a put option, if the price expires above the strike price, then the option expires out of the money and therefore worthless. The buyer's only loss is the premium paid to purchase his contract, and of course the buyer's loss is the seller's profit. However, if the asset price expires below the option strike price, this option is in the money and has value. The seller is then required to pay to the buyer the difference between the expiry price and the strike price. As all balances on Deribit are in cryptocurrency, the difference in dollars will of course be converted to BTC or Ethereum at the price of the underlying asset. The buyer's profit and loss in Bitcoin is calculated as follows. This would be in brackets the strike price minus the BTC price over the BTC price again minus the option price. The seller's profit and loss, of course, is the opposite, and this can be calculated as the option price minus, in brackets, the strike price minus the BTC price over the BTC price again. Taking a look at the Bitcoin option chain for the March 2021 expiry, we can see here the $10,000 put option. Let's work through using this option as an example to calculate and visualize both the profit and loss and the break-even point. We will assume a quantity of 1 and use a price of 0 0.153 BTC per contract as displayed here. So the buyer has paid 0.153 BTC to the seller for this option and has held the option to expiry. In the first scenario at 0800 UTC on the 27th of March 2020, the option expires and the delivery or settlement price of the underlying asset is $12,000. The settlement price of $12,000 is above the strike price of $10,000, so the option has expired out of the money, or OTM, and is therefore worthless. The buyer paid 0 0.153 BTC for this option and has received nothing in return, so they have made a loss of 0 0.153 BTC. The seller, on the other hand, collected this 0 0.153 BTC for the option and has not had to pay anything out. So they made a profit of 0 0.153 BTC. In scenario 2, at 0 0800 UTC on the 27th of March 2020, the option expires and the settlement price is $8,000. The settlement price of 8000 is below the strike price of $10,000. So the option has expired in the money, or ITM, and has a value of $2,000. That is the $10,000 strike price minus the $8,000 price at delivery. 
This must be paid by the seller to the buyer. The buyer's total profit and loss can be calculated as follows. In brackets, the strike price minus the BTC price over the BTC price again minus the option price. That is $10,000 minus $8,000 over $8,000 again minus 0 0.153. Simplified, 0 0.25 minus 0 0.153, or 0 0.097 BTC. The seller's loss will of course be the negative of this, but can be calculated as follows. The option price minus, in brackets, the strike price minus BTC price over the BTC price again, or 0 0.153 minus, in brackets, 10,000 minus 8,000 over 8,000. Simplified, 0 0.153 minus 0 0.25, or a loss of 0 0.097 BTC. More generally, we can plot the profit and loss of an option for both buyer and seller on a chart like so. This chart shows the $10,000 put option we selected and used in the examples with the expiry date along the x-axis and the profit and loss in BTC on the y-axis. The buyer's profit and loss is displayed in blue, and the seller's profit and loss is displayed in red. As you would expect, the inflection point is the strike price at $10,000. Above this point, the profit and loss is fixed to the premium paid of 0 0.153 BTC. And this is one of the most appealing features of being long a put option. No matter how high the price rises, the buyer can never lose more than they paid for the option. They still have short exposure similar to being short a futures contract, for example, but with a fixed risk. It's not all good news for the buyer, though. Observe where the profit and loss lines cross the x-axis. This is a break-even point. Notice how even though the put option has a strike price of $10,000, the break-even point is considerably lower than this. This means that the price needs to move quite far in the right direction before the position is profitable at expiry. The higher the price paid for the option, the further away from the strike price the break-even price will be. The put option is at break-even when, in brackets, the strike price minus the BTC price over the BTC price again minus the option price equals zero. So rearranging this formula to solve for the BTC price gives us the strike price over, in brackets, 1 plus the option price. Let's go through a few examples. Taking the previous example where the option price was 0 0.153 BTC and the strike price was $10,000, we can calculate the break-even point precisely as follows. The break-even price would be 10,000 over 1.153 or 8,673 and two cents, rounded to the nearest penny. For another example, let's calculate the break-even price of a $7,000 put option, assuming a price of 0 0.018 BTC. The break-even price would be 7,000 over 1 plus 0 0.018, or 7,000 over 1.018. This works out to $6,879.22, rounded to the nearest penny. The put option buyer's maximum loss is always limited to the option price paid. This also means that the put option seller's maximum profit is always limited to the option price paid. The maximum profit for the buyer when measured in BTC is unlimited. As the underlying Bitcoin price continues to fall, the amount of BTC required to pay the USD amount owed increases dramatically. This is bad news for the seller, as it means their maximum loss measured in BTC is also unlimited when selling Bitcoin put options. Here you can see a comparison of the maximum profit and loss for the put option buyer, long, and the put option seller, short, measured in both BTC and USD. There are some pros and cons of put options. A trader may wish to buy a put option instead of shorting a futures contract if they believe the price is going to go down, but they wish to have a fixed risk. It is possible, of course, to use a stop loss when short a futures contract to limit your risk. However, a put option has one very distinct advantage in comparison. With a regular margin account, the put option cannot be stopped out or liquidated. 
If the price spikes up even temporarily, the trader who is short the futures contract might be stopped out and unable to benefit from subsequent price decreases. The trader who is long the put option though will still be in the trade and so still able to benefit if the price then falls. Stop losses also have the added risk of slippage when due to the violent nature of the price movement in thin order books, the stop loss order executes at a worse price than desired, leading to a larger than expected loss. Long option positions do not have this problem, as the maximum loss is limited to the premium paid and can never go higher. Of course, there is also a downside to buying put options. Firstly, a premium must be paid. As shown earlier, this means that the break-even price is lower than the strike price, and sometimes considerably so. How far away this is depends on the amount paid for the option contract. Secondly, the option has a time limit. The expiry date of the option means the clock is ticking, so to speak, as soon as the option is purchased. If the underlying price fails to move sufficiently by the expiry date, the trade is over and will finish as a loser. So the put option buyer must not only be correct about the direction, but also the timing. This brings us nicely on to why a trader would choose to sell a put option. The put option seller benefits not only when the underlying price rises, but also when it fails to fall fast enough before the expiry date. If the price expires above the strike price, the seller gets to keep the entire premium. Even if the price falls though, they can still make some profit as long as it doesn't fall past the break-even point at expiry. The downside for the seller being that they do not have the benefit of having a fixed risk. If the underlying price keeps falling well past the strike price, the losses will also continue to rise. With put options that use the asset itself as collateral, for example using Bitcoin as collateral for Bitcoin options, this can quickly become considerably more than the seller intended to risk when measured in Bitcoin. In summary, a put option gives the buyer a way to have short exposure to the price of an asset with a fixed risk. The cost for this fixed risk position is the premium the buyer pays the seller. The buyer must also be correct about the timing of the fall in price. And finally, the break-even price for a put option will always be below the strike price. How far below depends on the price paid for the option. This was a brief summary on put options available at Deribit. Thank you very much for watching.